Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 79 with me Craig Barton. Now this is the second part of our series of videos where we're going to focus on full lessons that have been uploaded to TES. And the, with the logic being that it's absolutely fascinating for me as a teacher to look at a complete lesson that somebody's uploaded because as opposed to a single PowerPoint or a worksheet or an activity, with a lesson I get to see the full train of thought that a teacher's had. I get to fully appreciate the structure of the way they put their activities together. And it's absolutely ideal to then take that lesson apart, adapt it to suit my own style of teaching, the way my kids learn and so on, and to pull in different parts of full lessons. So um, last week we looked at a very, very structured, detailed lesson. This week we're going to look at one on real life graphs, which has been uploaded by Dominic Penny. Now, um, I had the privilege of uh, working with Dom um, a few years ago, and this is a lesson that he created to apply for a new job um, at Sale Grammar School, which he got on the basis of this lesson and, of course, his interview and so on. So it's an absolutely excellent lesson. Um, that about real life graphs, but there's a few key points I want to pull out about the way it's structured and the way it's put together that I think is, is really, really interesting. So um, it's a PowerPoint which you download and it looks like this. So straight off we open up with some uh, learning objectives which seems to be fairly common. Um, and again, notice the reference to levels. Teachers are still doing this, which I, I think is absolutely fine as it's something that we've all been used to over the last few years and it's, it's something that we understand and the students understand as well. And a nice little quick start there. Now this quick start um, is gonna be crucial for um, baseline knowledge, which the students are gonna need later on. So Dom can use this. And if um, students struggle with this particular quick start, then he knows he's gonna to need to intervene because if they can't do this, they're gonna really struggle with what's coming later on. Uh, then we get some learning objectives, um, almost and some. I know some teachers won't be a fan of that, but it's a very, very popular way of, of structuring things for learning objectives. And then we get a classic um, activity about real life graphs and mapping out uh, the graphs for different um, cups of water and um, filling up over time. So um, a nice start, and then we get um, a travel graphs activity um, about distances and so on, which again refers back to the baseline knowledge that the students acquired at the start, that Dom assessed. Um, with nice answers and then this is where I think the lesson really takes off competition time so we have a really really uh, rich engaging card sort which notice for students to be able to access that particular level of knowledge uh, to be sorry to be able to um, access this activity they need to be able to um, interpret distance time graphs which Dom has assessed here and they're also going to need to do speed distance and time which Dom has also assessed here and assessed at the very starter activity so um, what's really really important from that is I see a lot of lessons which are rammed full of really engaging interesting activities but the teacher in question doesn't really know whether the students have the knowledge to be able to take on these particular activities because that's not been assessed earlier on in the lesson. So what Dom's done here is assess the key baseline knowledge and then knowing that the students can do that, allow them to show off their creativity and their problem solving skills and their group working skills using that knowledge in a rich environment like this. And then Dom has kindly put all the answers together there, which is really, really nice. And notice as well, I like this, Dom has cleverly removed one of the descriptions. So there's gonna be one graph that doesn't have um, any description to it and it's up to the students to create their own event to do that. So there's a rich, interesting activity. But then Dom follows it up with another absolute classic. Now, I'm a huge fan of Dan Mayer, and anyone who's ever heard me talk will, will know I never stop banging on about him. One of his earlier websites was Graphing Stories. Absolutely wonderful website, and Dom makes full use of it here. So if I just show you, this links to this one, Graphing Stories, which is absolutely brilliant website, uh, where, in fact, what well, else really, let's, let's crack one open here, where students watch a video. So in this particular case, it's um, a video on somebody doing some uh, some press ups sorry not press ups some uh, bar lifts um, on a bench and the student's job is to graph this so if i just show it you very very quickly here so the idea is that the students must create a graph based on the height of the center of the uh, the, the bar uh, relative to the floor in the case of a 30 second video and then if i just jump to the end the video ends up looking like that so it's in a real life graph in interesting context and Dom's brought that um, into the lesson and I like that because it's it's not just a, a kind of token thing that Dom's put in there to, to impress it's something engaging but mathematically valid so really really nice and there's loads of good ones uh, loads of good ones there for students to look at 
Um, and then there's a classic thing there where students can see exactly where they're at. Um, perhaps these are GCSE students, so they can see a GCSE exam, and Don will be able to tell them where, whereabouts on the paper that particular one came, maybe even refer to the examiner's report to show what kind of percentage of kids got that right. So I'm a big, big fan of bringing an exam question in there for assessment. And here's what I absolutely love as well, because often as a teacher, I teach a lesson, and at the end of it, I walk out feeling happy with myself, but then I think, well, wait a minute, I've no idea whether the kids have actually understood that or not. What progress have they made? So Dom addresses that by doing a really nice distance time quiz at the end. So based on the student's answers, he'll have a really good sense of whether his class have achieved what he wanted them to or where their particular weak, their weak areas are that he needs to focus on on uh, the next lesson. And maybe the kids can answer these on mini whiteboards or active vote software or just voting or, or so on. So there it is, another uh, another full complete lesson uploaded to TES, but different to the one that we saw last time. Um, and some really key points I like to I like about that the, the emphasis on baseline knowledge and assessing that before the kids go on to acquire the new knowledge absolutely essential and then bringing in that wide variety of activities so if I was teaching real life real life graphs I would certainly be taking parts of that but also if I was planning any lesson I'll be using aspects of what Dom did and aspects of last week's lesson as well so I hope you found that useful and I'm going to keep this little series of uh, videos going for a while because uh, hopefully this will be something that, that teachers of, of all ages and experience will find useful. I know I certainly do. So I'll be back with another one of these next week. Take care and bye for now.